tutti, mi ringrazio di venire. Thank you very much for coming, everyone. We really appreciate it. Um, sono la maestra del francese, del francese in here, ma adesso um, vado a insegnare italiano per la prima volta in here l'anno prossimo. È una cosa grande a casa nostra. Sì, è una cosa grande. E, I'm the French teacher, but starting next year, I'll be teaching Italian for the first time in Heron, and that's really a big deal for us. Um, we're the only school south of Chicago. E la sola scuola, liceo, di insegnare italiano al sur di Chicago. Uh, allora. um, uh, adesso, i miei studenti, ancora i studenti di francese, um, vorrei um, presentare le cose di Heron. Um, the slides, I don't know, the slides will be, will be in, in Italiano. Uh, me loro vanno a parlare inglese. Um, prima, um, noi abbiamo un studente che canta e lei um, canterà um, the national anthem. E dopo cominciamo. We will start as soon as Brandy Miller. Brandy Miller will be singing our national anthem.
Okay. Coal mining was and it still is a very dangerous job, and it's really important because we use it to, to get fuel. And a lot of people risk their lives when they lost it to obtain this. Many Italians came from Cugiono between the late 1800s to the 1920s. At the height of the immigration to southern Illinois, there were as many as 4,000 Italians that found work in the known mines. <coughs> Coal mining was a very serious job. It was something that I think people took a lot of pride in because as a father, you probably bring home money for your children and support your families. And uh, at 7 a.m. is when your job would start and the whistle would blow, so you'd go to work. And at 3.55, it would blow again and you would know that the work day was almost done. At the end of the day, the last whistle would blow at 4 and it would let them know that there would be work the next day. If there was one blast, it means there would be no work. And three blasts for work. The implementation. Coal miners had to reach the underground depths. Large wheels were used to hoist and lower cages full of people to the mines. All right. After they took the cage ride, the miners still may not be at the place where they were actually going to be mined. <coughs> Sometimes they would ride mining tubs to actually reach their destination. Equipment. Helmets with electric lights were useful in addition to lanterns. Picks were used to dig for veins of coal. Lunch had to be packed and predicted because they were underground. There was a lot of dust and all sorts of random junk that you get your food. So they used aluminum pails that were fitted with compartments so you wouldn't get like your drink and your sandwich and stuff like that. So we got pictures up there of uh, different containers. Holding up the job. Miners went to work surrounded by support beams. Some were made of steel and some were made of wood. After they found a vein of coal, the miners would proceed to load excavation of the coal. Where, like, they'd load all the coal that they got into carts, and then they would move them into other things, and they called them cutters, and they would just like send them out. Bring it up and move it out. After they brought up the coal and their ship ended, it was time to go home to their families. The end. <laughs> Ernesto, ai, da, ho portato il libro, ho portato il libro in Sibiria, dopo te lo do. This next presentation is also on coal mining, um, 